Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make vacuum tube spice parameters from a data sheet using Graph Grabber and Microsoft Excel with its solver added. I've already uh, downloaded into Graph Grabber a copy of the data sheet for the 6SL7 HiMu triode. I cleaned it up a little bit too. I added some uh, some colors so that you can more clearly uh, see where the you know 50 and 100 uh, marks are on the on the sheet. First thing you do is you've got to set the uh, the x-axis. You click down here at 0, 0 and then drag over to 500. Okay, that sets the x. Uh, the minimum is 0 and the maximum is 500. Okay, now I'll set the y-axis. There drag it up to 3.5. Okay, the minimum is 0, the maximum is 3.5. Check. Okay, now I'm just going to do one uh, one data point. Check data series. Let's pick uh, this one, 1.0. And we're going to get close to 0. We try to make these, you know, line them up on the plate voltage uh, markers and it uh, uh, I'm doing this pretty quickly you can you put a lot more data points in if you like okay and yeah, we got a you know several data points here of the you know plate current plate voltage and let's see what it looks like okay grab data file export to the desktop are my documents and let's just call that uh, tube T-U-B-E okay we're done now uh, I what happens when you do that is you create an Excel uh, spreadsheet I've taken the um, 6SL7 data, I created a lot more data points. Uh, this is the plate voltage, the grid voltage, current, okay, and I have the initial parameters for the 12AX7, which is a similar high mu triode. Uh, mu, EX, which is the power factor. Uh, KG1, which is derived from the three half power law, KP, which is purveyance, and KVB, which is also from uh, the um, uh, three half power uh, power law. I create the equations down uh, uh, down here to calculate uh, plate current, and then I take this predicted value and the value from the data sheet and compare them. Uh, with a uh, with a chart, and you can see with the 12 AX7 values, we're we're close, but uh, got a lot of work to uh, a lot of work to do. To you know to analyze the data, we're going to uh, use Microsoft Excel Solver function. Now Solver is a is an add-in, and you download it by going uh, into the file section and manage the uh, manage the uh, the add-ons. It'll show. It'll then show up in the uh, uh, data tab over here as uh, as solver. Okay, you can see that I've used it already. I have a target cell with the uh, the sum of the errors, and I'm using the log squashed error. I have it here in uh, in big blue type so that you can uh, you can see it and you can see it while we iterate. Uh, and then I have the parameters here for uh, Corin's equations. I also have found that it's uh, important uh, to set B7 uh, as a constraint greater than or equal to uh, 1. Uh, this comes from the 3 half power law and uh, solver is going to uh, uh, give you a value less than uh, less than 1 uh, but really the physics are that you know it would be nice to obey uh, how a tube actually uh, actually behaves. The other thing that's very important to do with uh, with solver 
is to uh, you know take a look at the options because these have to be uh, have to be set. Uh, you can you know reduce the number of iterations if you want or just keep it at a thousand, which is the default value. You can change the pre precision, the, you know, the tolerance and convergence. What's important though is to use the automated uh, scaling because some of these numbers are, are large and some are uh, and some are quite small. The other thing is to uh, search via Newtonian approximation. Uh, I like to show the iteration results here so that we can step through it and uh, and and see how we're doing. You'll see how the model uh, calculates how close we can come to uh, to reality. So we'll click that, and we're going to solve. Let me just drop this down here so you can see what happens. Okay, we're starting out in the base case there. Okay, that's the first approximation. Second, third, getting very close. Uh, right there, the you know, squashed error at one point nine seven two to the minus two. And you can see with each iteration we do a little bit uh, a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to stop here because you get the uh, you get the idea. We've got this nettlesome area down here. I mean, you know, you're generally not going to run this uh, uh, tube with the grid uh, grounded or at zero uh, at zero potential. Uh, but otherwise, the you know you've got the data that you need to. Uh, uh, figure out how to employ the 6SL7. Incidentally, I'm using the 6SL7 uh, as a replacement for the 6SN7 in uh, Yaniger's uh, impasse preamp. Uh, he had suggested that I use the 6SL7 when uh, using the impasse to drive red light district uh, power amplifier. The uh, the idea for this uh, little video was you know really came from Pierre Tuzelet's article in Audio Express in September 2007 in which he uh, discussed Solver. I really never used it before, so decided to uh, uh, experiment. And uh, what what I've got right now are uh, values that I can put into the parameters of the Spice model and come very closely to approximating what this tube should look like uh, in actual practice.